Well, it is February in Central Virginia, so goose season's out, duck season's out. The water is still like 38, 40 degrees if you want to try to go bass fishing. And today it is cold and the wind is ripping. So I'm going trout fishing. Um, man, and there's a lot of people out, even though this isn't even the creek that they stocked today or yesterday. This this creek was stocked like over a week ago and there were there was a bunch of people right there. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's trout fishing. It's it's something to, to pass the time with. I'm in Madison. Uh, if you fish out here, you'll definitely recognize probably everywhere I'm fishing. And that's fine. I'm not worried about giving this up because lots of people fish here. It is no secret. But hopefully I can catch a couple. Okay, walking up on the creek here. I'm stopping at a spot. There's, there's a spot a little bit upstream of here where the fish will sometimes get, I don't really think they stock them there, but I think sometimes they'll end up either getting spooked or the water gets high and uh, they'll get washed into there. And we have had some rain since they stocked this creek last, so there could be some fish in there. Usually when I find them over there, I have them to myself, which is very rare anywhere trout fishing around here. But I guess I'm gonna start by drifting a couple times right here so i pretty much fish two rods all the time one with a split shot and this little dude right here power egg it's just a floating soft plastic egg it's got some glitter kind of wish they didn't put it on there but it gets all over me i don't know that it is the difference maker on a stock trout i don't really know that that's what makes him decide to bite and my other rod a jig head of some sort. There's a trout magnet on there right now. Another pickup coming by right now. This is kind of, this is maybe the most absurd I've ever seen it. Farm use tags. Welcome to Madison. I fished a few spots on this day where I couldn't see any fish, but it looked potentially fishy. I've been fishing this creek, this area for probably at least 12 years now, so I kind of know better, but I knew that if all I did in this video was fish for trout that I could visibly see in the pools, people would say, oh, you, you need to go make some casts over there in that swift water. A lot of trout sit in that swift water that you can't see. I've, I've fished here a lot, um, and at this point in time, there's not enough trout in the creek to fish stuff like that. I mean, you could catch them, I'm sure, at some point, but you would have to put in a lot of time to do that, and I just fish the pools where I can see them, put the odds in my favor. So, what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm just looking for them because the water is clear enough that the odds of there being a trout there that I can't see are very low. These are stock trout, not wild trout. Wild trout can hide a lot better. Stock trout usually look like a blue or green bar glowing out there in the river. Right now it's so clear though that you can uh, you could probably tell if it was a, a brook or a rainbow. That's that's how clean this water is right now. It's not that low right now. Um, like this spot right here could hold a fish that I wouldn't be able to see. This one definitely could, but if it was more than one, if it was two or three in a pool like this, I'd be able to see them, especially if I stood here for a minute. Usually what I'll do, I get up over top of the pool, usually a lot more stealthily than this. I already walked by this one, that's why I'm not super stealthy right now but i'll just stand here and watch because the current kind of moves back and forth and sometimes you'll only get a glimpse of them when the current is running a certain way if you just hang out and watch basically what i'm talking about is a technique for spotting fish in fast water it's just to wait and see you know sometimes you'll catch a flicker of their tail or the current boiling current that's flowing down the river will sometimes be slick and sometimes it'll be disturbed on the surface. So you may, you know, all, all of a sudden it'll turn into almost like a window through to the bottom of the creek, as opposed to a very distorted image that you'll be seeing when the current is swirling. I'm gonna go mess with them. One of them looks like he's been snagged in the top of the back. So that's good. There's three of them. Three of them sitting right there. 
four? Looks like three. Looks like three. They're sitting in a very bad spot to try to catch one. Stick another split shot on here. Running a six pound liter. I don't think I'll have to go to four. I got four on the jig, but that's more about the action of the jig. Oh yeah, see they're already freaking out and I haven't even cast. So that might be bad. They may just spook as soon as I throw the bait in here. We're gonna find out here in just a second. Just down there in front of them. And they are not impressed. Okay, I got my head right in front of one of them. Oh, he's looking at it. He's looking at it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. I got him. Oh, he came off. He came off. Well, I tried. <clears throat> well, they're probably done now because I hooked the one, but you never know. I'm not trying to give a stock trout more credit than it deserves, but if they are fish that get fished for a lot, they're going to be very sensitive to angling pressure. And these fish, obviously living right under a bridge that the road passes over, have seen a lot of fishermen. Well done. <clears throat> thing. Probably will not get one on a jig. And I kind of looked at it. Paying attention to the body language of a stock trout is pretty important if you're sight fishing. If he turns his head and looks at your bait, there's a good chance you'll get that fish to bite. I'm pretty sure that other fish is not even a trout. Oh, he swiped at it. I might actually get him to bite. Oh, I missed him again. I'm biting the tail of it. That might be it right there. I yanked it out of his mouth. I'll give it another go though. But I don't think he's gonna bite. I think that's it. Okay, this fish has had about five minutes to rest. And I changed colors of my jig. Sometimes that'll work. Uh-oh, he liked it. He looked at it. Oh, he went for it right there. He's excited. He's either going to get spooked or he's going to bite. Going back through this footage is kind of ridiculous. I worked this one fish by itself for collectively at least 15 minutes of like bouncing a jig in front of his nose, but I kind of like the challenge of it, I guess, because uh, I can tell a lot of the time when I can get a fish to bite and I just know how much effort it's going to take. It's kind of similar to bed fishing for a bass. Sometimes it just gets personal, and that's definitely what happened with this fish. Went right up to it that time. He can't stand it. I think he's going to get it in the next two goes. That was one. Okay, oh, that was not what we wanted to do. Take him straight to the truck. Okay. I try not to really handle him here. You see the sucker did, a, did eventually eat it. It just took about 10 minutes too long. Okay, so uh, there were people everywhere on the creek that got stocked a week and a half ago. This one was stocked yesterday. And this right here is like probably top three pools on the river. And there's nobody within 500 yards of me. I'm very confused. <clears throat> I'm gonna ease down here because there's like a good wad of fish right in front of me here. I don't, don't really understand why there's nobody here. 
because yeah this is like a super obvious spot to catch them everybody knows it but i guess i don't yeah i have no idea they've either been thrashed or they haven't had time to settle but i'm pretty sure they've been thrashed because i really eased eased down right here and they were they were spooking pretty bad so there's still enough of them i feel like i'll probably get one to bite though at least right off the bat six or eight of them right here at least they are in a tough spot to get my bait to them though got one Little baby guy, but we did get one. It's a very small rainbow, but that's okay. I'm just trying to catch them for my pond. Probably need more split shot too. I need to work quickly because there's going to be more people here. I can't believe I'm the only one fishing here right now. I guess maybe everybody came first thing, caught a bunch of them. Tough spot to fish for them, for sure. Without spooking them. Okay, here we go. I'm right in the right in the business there. Got him. Nicer. No, not really a nicer one. Okay. Oh, he came off. That was easy enough. Ooh, there's a bunch more right there. Let's try for those. Yeah, I'm gonna get one of these. They want a bite. Oh, what? Little baby brook trout. <laughs> that was that was pretty funny. We're gonna put him back. Okay, back to the egg, but with a lot more split shot. Okay, got that all situated. I guess this is just my pool. Can't believe that. Okay, this is not very exciting stuff. Pop this hook out. Put him in there. Gonna change to the pink one. For whatever reason, stock trout think that when you change colors, they're safe again. They can't seem to figure out the color changing thing. There's a pod of them. Oh, they were right there. They have, they have moved. So we're gonna fish for these ones again up here. Okay, we got trout number four. He's a brook trout. So, there's some fish in this pool that look bigger than what I'm catching. And unfortunately, there's times, usually right when they've been put in, that for some reason, the difference between that little egg, which is normally the best, and some of this stupid Play-Doh uh, can actually, it makes a big difference. So I'm probably, 
probably gonna get one. I'm gonna really try, cause see, I have to watch for when they eat it, cause I really don't want to gut hook any. I'm trying to keep them alive. And so, power bait is really tough to use for that. This is not normally how you do it, but I kind of leave my hook sticking out of it so that I can set the hook as soon as they get it and try not to kill them. Um, and I'm using a barbless hook to hopefully uh, not hurt them any more than I have to when catching them. We'll see, we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, there's some in here that look pretty nice and I have not caught any of them. All the ones I'm catching are small. Can't figure that out. Here we go. I hate how instant that was. I let so many eggs sit in front of these fish. I didn't get any of them. Okay, got a little bit of battery left. Try to get another one right here. <clears throat> got another one. But see, I was talking about, I'm paying attention because this is power bait, which is like the most gut hookingest bait in the world. I'm gonna grab this fish entirely with the net, which you can see right in the lip. It's because I was watching and as soon as he ate it, I set the hook, which I don't recommend attempting and it's almost impossible to do, but I've caught a lot of stock trout in my time. And with that, we have our limit of fish for the day. Brought these five back here to the truck. Figure this guy's probably getting a little lonely. And there we go. It should be fine for the ride home. It's cold enough that you don't need an aerator right now. The pond is pretty muddy right now, but it only gets like that right after our rain. Right out of there. Okay. There's two of them, two rainbows. Two of them. Let those bad boys go. Two more. Brook and a rainbow. And the last two, two more rainbows. That concludes the stock trout video. It's not something that I take super seriously, but it is enjoyable for me. I grew up fishing this way with my brothers and my dad. Fun to be able to bring those fish home and put them in the neighbor's pond. We get to catch them throughout the spring until it gets too warm. And then they get consumed by sometimes me, but usually all of Mother Nature's creatures. Hope you enjoyed the trout video. Got a few more of those coming. Been uh, killing some time waiting on this water to warm up so I can catch some bass.